Hi everyone, it's Logan, and the time we have all been waiting for has finally arrived. Yes, I'm talking about the unboxing of my new batteries. Well, okay, I lied a little bit. It's not really an unboxing. I already opened it up. I was way too excited. I had the look. Mm, smell that fresh Chinese air. All right. So this is from my supplier in China. Uh, it is a box of lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now you might ask, what's that? I'm sure you've all heard of lithium ion. That's what uh, well, every laptop has and every phone has and even even the Tesla uh, electric cars have. But that's not what this has because really those are not the right batteries. Caution. I know it says lithium ion. I mean, they do include lithium, but it's not lithium. It is lithium iron phosphate. And uh, yeah, do not load or transport package if damaged. Well, it's not damaged. <laughs> It's going to burn if damaged, automatically, spontaneously combusts. No, that's not true. So in here, there are 24 individual batteries. And here we go. All right, here's what they look like. So let me explain here. I did a lot of searching, and you can buy actual packs with little screws on the top that are really easy to connect to. However, two things about them. One, they're typically done up to whatever voltage you want. And being that my last attempt was, shall we say, uh, underperforming my expectations. In fact, by the way, if you haven't seen that last video about my go-kart, you can check it out. Uh, let's put it right here. Anyway, um, if you haven't seen that yet, it didn't perform the way I wanted. So, I had expected 24 volts would be enough, and I still think it will. However, in case it's not, I got 24 batteries in here. Each are 3.2 volts. Nominal. Of course, it'll be a little bit higher than that when they're fully charged. So, that means about, what, 38 volts times 2? But I'll have one battery for each motor, so it's equivalent to two 38-volt motors in parallel. So, uh, I do have the capability of going up that high. Now, I got them like this for two reasons. One, they were really cheap. Um, all of these batteries together cost $164, $168, something like that. Not very much at all, very cheap. Actually, the shipping cost more than the batteries themselves. The shipping was over $200, something like $220 to get them from China. Um, so, to save on some cost here, I'm actually going to be doing all this myself, putting them together. So, you can see the, uh, the anode and the cathode are here. One of them is covered up by that piece there, just to make sure it didn't touch anything during shipping. So, uh, basically the way to put these together into a bigger pack is to actually put this one together with the next one and then place a piece of solder in here, clamp them together, heat it up and melt the solder. And when it cools, it will hold them together. So of course putting them in series, we want anode to cathode and then vice versa for the next one all the way up. Now. I want to make this modular, so my plan is not to just wire these all into one big series connection. What I'm planning on doing is actually using my charger, uh, where is that, hold on just a second. Okay, what I plan to do here is use this charger. So, this charger is by Turnigy, Turnigy, I'm assuming it's Turnigy. All right, here's what it looks like. And it's this is a really neat charger. It's capable of charging lithium polymer, lithium iron, lithium ion, nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium, and lead acid batteries. And it can do up to six lithium iron phosphate batteries in series, 6S there. So it can do up to six of them at a time. 
Now I could have had, like I said, a charger made specifically for whatever voltage I decided to put these in, but since I didn't know, and my contact at the supplier said that it's, I'm going to have to buy multiple chargers for whatever uh, scenario I end up going with, I thought I'll just do this here. And then what I'm going to do is wire these into packs of probably six. So I'll probably have some multiple thereof, um, you know, 18, 24, 30, 36 volts, something like that. Um, so this should be able to charge them, and then I may have to charge each one individually, or I may mod this a little bit and make it do all of them in parallel, um, just at a, a lower amperage charging than it's really designed to. But uh, we'll see. That's yet to be determined, but it's really neat. Uh, the way it can connect and charge all of them together. You just have to uh, tell it what you're doing, program that, and then it can also remember it. So I could have, um, if I end up going with some other numbers, say I could have two packs of six and one pack of two or something like that. Um, or yeah, I'm just throwing out numbers, one pack of six, one pack of four, whatever. I could program a six and a four, and then it would automatically remember those. So, after I get these all together, I will be using this wire. This is actually a 6 gauge stranded wire here. Should be easily able to carry 60 amps. And if my motors are each pulling more than 60 amps, I'm probably going to blow some uh, transistors. So, I'm not worried about that. Uh, this wire should be able to support it. So, it's going to go from the motor... Um, to one side of the battery and then in between each set of batteries and then out the other side um, so I'll be cutting this up a little bit but there you go let me get these out of the box here give me just a second so I've turned off the flash so maybe we can focus a little bit better and I've taken them out of the packaging so here's what they look like compared to my hand so they're quite small quite compact when you think about it and I wanted to give an example and, and show why I decided to go with these batteries over anything else. So the biggest reason is, think about a car battery. Uh, it's called lead-acid battery if you're not familiar. And lead-acid batteries have one redeeming quality in that they're cheap and readily available. And that's it. Uh, they're very heavy and there's... A very interesting side effect in that the anode and cathode will get all gunked up if power is consumed rapidly. So, um, imagine your car has something like 700 cold cranking amps. So that means uh, the battery might be able to output 700 amps for 30 seconds and then it'll just drop off. And that'll be it. Even though you haven't used, say, the entire 40 amp hour capacity, because you've only been running it for 30 seconds, the power output is so high that it'll gunk everything up with a chemical reaction inside and it won't work anymore. It'll be basically at the end. Uh, these batteries are different. These batteries can go at very high current until the very, 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 very end when they'll slightly go down a little bit and then you have something uh, computerized just to shut it off at that point so it doesn't wreck the batteries to go for the voltage to go any lower than that. Um, so that's one very a big reason. The other thing is that these things are light. I'm going to put them on the scale here. And sorry for you uh, European folk, this is in pounds. So let's say I use, uh, what is this, eight of them? Which is 27 volts or so. And so 4.4 pounds. So let's say I have two of these, so you're looking at not even nine pounds. Um, all of these together are probably, I don't know, 13 pounds, something like that. A regular lead-acid battery, a car battery, is 20, maybe 30 pounds, maybe more. So I have the equivalent, just in this pack here, imagine this is 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts, so that's 12 volts, 30 amp hours. That's three-fourths of the amp hours of a car battery the same voltage, maybe even a little bit more, and yet it weighs a third as much, <laughs> I mean, maybe less. So I got at least two car, close to two car batteries worth of power right here, 
at what a quarter of the size and a third of the weight that's why we go with these in addition to the power uh, output being more consistent like I mentioned just a minute ago so this is going to be a fun project it is going to take me a little bit to get this all going because of one other major thing I can't just throw these all together and this is the one downside of having to do this myself um, most of the time with lithium batteries you're going to hear about something called a BMS or, or um, battery management system and what it does is it keeps all of the batteries charged individually so that you're not exceeding their capacity and causing these to expand because these type will expand if they're overcharged uh, they won't start on fire the way lithium ion batteries do uh, but if you bring them down too low it'll destroy the battery's ability to hold a charge so you have to have a management system that makes sure that doesn't happen well there's one way to get around that where you don't have to buy an expensive management system and that's to when you initially set this up bring all of them down very nearly to the bottom where the voltage is at some predefined minimum of maybe 2.4 volts something like that and then charge the, a bunch of them together until the very uh, until whichever one has the lowest capacity is full up and then stop it all together so what I mean is say this one has 10 amp hours this one has 10.1 amp hours and this one has 9.9 .9 amp hours just because of some defect of the way it was made it's being slightly different so if they're all charged to 10.1 this one's going to expand uh, if they're only charged to 9.8 this one will be full and these two will be slightly less, or 9.9. .9. That's the way you want it. So what happens is you discharge them all so that they're at the same voltage, then you charge them all until the lowest one reaches the highest, the, the full amount of charge for that battery, and then shut all of them off. Now you have that same amount of current to use across all of them, even though a couple of them aren't fully charged you know that once you discharge to that certain point they're all going to discharge to that exact same point and you don't have to worry about ban battery management system as long as you're doing that consistently uh, which is what this charger is designed to do this is going to be part 4a 4b I think is going to be the process of me actually putting them all together soldering them, connecting them, testing them, charging them, etc etc and then the final one is going to be me installing it in the go-kart and actually driving it around and showing you progressively say at 12 volts and then 18 volts and then 24 volts and showing you how it all works so if you want to build your own then maybe you can replicate it but uh, for now uh, thanks for checking this out like it if you like it just like if you didn't get subscribed so you can see the rest of it and other than that of course have a great day we have All I have to say is, missile. oh yeah. That went right. Does right. that not look awesome? <laughs> oh. So it's obviously not entirely finished. I have to get another one of these on the other side. But that's cool. Covered an enemy ah, I still have to cut these off. <laughs> this side's going to be a little bit tougher to do because I still have to, 